So what is exon skipping? Um, first of all, an exon you can think of is a building block, components of the gene that end up being the building blocks of the protein. And so we'll get into that a little bit more um, in detail in the next slide. But exon skipping is a strategy for restoring the dystrophin protein. And what you're trying to do when you're exon skipping is you're skipping over one of those building blocks to counteract the problems that have been created by your dystrophin mutation. And then this make, helps the body make a slightly shorter dystrophin protein. You might be missing pieces in the middle, but um, very often it's a still functional dystrophin protein. And the reason why we know this is because there's some individuals who naturally exon skip. So they have some sort of deletion, let's say, and then the body skips an additional exon to sort of um, restore the production of this dystrophin protein. And those you might know if you've, um, you or your, your son has had a, a muscle biopsy, these are called revertant fibers. So you could have small numbers of muscle fibers which are expressing this dystrophin protein. And that very often is associated with a less severe disease or a slower progression. And so that gave scientists the idea, okay, there's this process that happens naturally in some people, maybe we can develop therapeutics which drive that a little bit stronger so that we could get more skipping happening um, in more individuals and that would be therapeutically beneficial. So this doesn't alter your DNA directly, it works on the RNA, but it only works for some dystrophy mutations, which we'll go through. Generally speaking, if you have a deletion in an exon adjacent to the one we're gonna be skipping, this might work for you, but it's kind of complicated to figure that out on your own. So if you don't already know, this is something you can talk to your neurologist about or um, a genetic counselor or set up a, a Cure Duchenne Cares one-on-one -on -one meeting and I or Dr. Mike Kelly or, um, or some of our CARES team can help with that. Okay, so I'm gonna show you now in pictures how exon skipping works. So what we're looking at on the left, those blue boxes are representative of these building blocks or the 79 exons which end up getting made into the dystrophin protein. And I'll draw your attention to the shape of those boxes because that's intentional. The shape um, has to fit together exactly and that represents how the sequence or the genetic code actually map, matches up in a way so that you can get from one to two to three um, all the way to 79. And if they don't match up exactly as what's demonstrated sort of here in this middle panel, if you have a gap, we say the reading frame is disrupted. The, you don't get across that gap and then you don't get the dystrophin proteins. So in this example, it's trying to show if you have a deletion in exon 50, now 49 and 51 don't match up the way they're supposed to. And so in that case, your reading frame is disrupted and that protein translation stops or the, you end up with a very unstable protein and you don't end up with dystrophin. So what exon skipping tries to do is say, okay, can we skip an additional exon? In this case, if you have a deletion in exon 50, if we also skip over 51, you can see 49 matches up with 52 in the way that it's supposed to, and we say then the reading frame is restored. And that gives you a protein which goes from one to 79, and it's just missing those two exons in between. And so this is one, just one example of uh, an exon 51 skip amenable mutation. You can work this through, you know, it's like a puzzle. Um, I have an app on my phone, you can work this through to, to try other things. Um, it works not just for single exon deletions, it works for, for if you have um, multi exon deletions. In this case, we have a two exon deletion um, in both exons 49 and 50. You see that 48 doesn't match up with 51, but in that case, if you also skip 51, now 48 matches up with 52, and you've restored the reading frame, and you end up with um, the ability to get from one to 79, just missing those in the middle. 
I'll pause, I see some people are taking pictures. So knowing what we know about the prevalence of certain types of mutations and going through that puzzle map that we saw in the previous slides, it turns out that theoretically about 80% of individuals with Duchenne have a, a genotype, have a mutation which would be amenable to exon skipping. And currently we have four FDA approved drugs and they target skipping exon 45, 51, and 53, and that accounts for roughly 29% of cases of DMD. And we're gonna hear from speakers who will tell you a little bit more about that. Um, and we're also gonna hear about programs that they have as well as a lot of other companies um, developing uh, and have therapeutics in clinical trials. And some of the things I want you to pay attention to is the goals of these additional programs are, first of all, to target additional exons so that we can be um, helping a wider array of individuals, to improve the amount of skipping efficiency that you get and the amount of dystrophin restoration, and not just in skeletal muscles, but also getting into the heart where we know um, we wanna, we wanna replace dystrophin there too. And some of these programs also are trying to make the burden of treatment a little bit less. So individuals, um, this is a treatment you would have to get repeatedly, um, and the approved drugs are weekly infusions, and so some of the, the clinical trials are trying to stretch that out so that you could um, not have to come in or not have to get dosed as, as uh, frequently. And so this slide, we don't have to pay a lot of attention to, it's very busy. But what's really great about it being busy is it sort of expresses just how much is going on in this space. There's a lot of groups which are working on exon skipping. And so that's wonderful for us, right? We have then a lot of shots on goals for success. And I could have made this slide even busier because in addition to um, what's FDA approved and the clinical trials that all of these speakers are, are gonna be telling you about, I know that all of these um, companies also have other programs targeting other exons, which they're working on still in the lab and trying to get to the point where they can take those into clinical trials as well. 